Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cool Cat and welcome to Trifecta. Today, I want to build bridges with my neighbors. Nah, I'm just kidding. I want to build bridges for myself. Getting all of the tools and materials to build this first bridge though was a bit of a hassle, since I'm sure that you guys all are incredibly rich and understand that time is money, I'm gonna keep this right to the point. It all started when I was coming home from some exploration. I wasn't paying attention and I jumped, thinking I would hit a lake. Turns out this was a really deep ravine, and as my life flashed before my eyes, only one thing saved me. That's right baby, water bucket, best item 20 years in a row, don't even ask, undisputed champion. Despite not dying, it was still way too close of a call, so I decided to enchant and see if I could get Feather Falling 4. To get XP, I wanted to go to the nether, so I built a portal, 2x3, with no corners, as it should be. Luckily, my spawn was a lot better than the other guys had, and I spawned in a bastion. Unluckily, the inhabitants of the bastion were really, really mad that I took all of their gold. Needless to say, I ran. I was not going to die before threefold. It was around this time that I saw an advertisement slash threat for the Mandalorian, Lash's new shop at spawn. It had some nice decorations, and two mending books for one diamond was way too good of a deal to pass up. With mending on both of my pickaxes, I went mining for both experience and blocks. This included a stop to a desert, which came in handy when Lash wanted cactus. He completely overpaid with a build-your-own netherite ingot, but I was happy to take the deal. As he was leaving, we saw some illagers, and not really thinking, I killed them. This wasn't really a problem, but there was one small issue. I live in a village. Not wanting my own villagers to die, I heroically stole a horse and rode off to the nearest other village, where I bravely went through wave after wave of raids. right up until evokers spawned. After killing them and taking their totems, I dipped right out of there. The village did not make it, not at all, but that is not my problem. With my new totem, I felt brave enough to go back to the nether and try and get some ancient debris. This leads us to where we are now. It took a couple near-death experiences, but we finally made it and can start building. Well, it took a very long time, but I think that that's looking really, really nice. This was my first time playing with gradients and texturing much, so I'm very glad that it turned out as well as it did. But if I've learned one thing from all of this mess, it's that building like this is not gonna cut it. We need better ways to get blocks, to process them, we need better ways to make scaffolding to go up and down, in general, I just mean that we need better ways to make things, and that's going to mean create. It's also going to mean putting this building to use. It is meant to be for storage, after all. I went ahead and made a little bit of progress, nothing too crazy. The floor here still needs a little bit of finishing. But the second floor here actually has quite a few chests. I don't love the look of them floating on top of each other, but you take what you can. 
And if nothing else, we have these nice signs from supplementaries, which make for a great way to label what each section has. Now, as for Create, Create begins in the same way it always has. You want to take some iron nuggets and some andesite and make andesite alloy. If you then put down some stripped wood and right click it with the alloy, you're going to make andesite casings. These get used in all of the basic create items, and they're what we'll be focusing on today. We want to get into create for items like the harvester to automate food or crops, and stuff like the saw to automate both cutting down trees or just getting better value out of our logs. We're also absolutely going to want the encased fan with lava or water to be able to cook items at no cost. When you're trying to make hundreds of stone, it adds up. Create even lets us make mud blocks which otherwise we would have to go and mine by hand. It's a really powerful mod, and to get an idea of what we can do with this, I'm going to go pay a visit to Threefold. Before heading over though, I made sure to upgrade all of my gear with netherite that I'd spent hours mining. When I started mining, I was at level 0, and by the end of it I was at level 47, just from the quartz that I hit along the way. But if it means that I get to show up in a full suit of full protection netherite armor, I'm willing to pay that price. I need to send a message that he is going to be the one to die first. Also, bonus points if you get the naming scheme. With our fancy new gear, I'm off to pay a visit to Threefold and, uh, flex on him. I mean, no. I'm going to go and pay a visit to his new franchise restaurant. That is a cool sight to see as you arrive. I like that. And I think that we can eat- oh, he's killing all- this is caught on camera. Animal cruelty. He will be brought to justice. Look at him go, he's just- unexpectedly violent from threefold. But I guess he does run a fast food company now, so animal cruelty is just part of the package. Hello, hello. You, you actually scared me there, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, welcome. See, the place has changed quite a bit since I was last here. Yes, it has, yeah. I've been building like crazy. Yeah, I should be using these daub blocks. They look great. Nice yellow and red branding. Completely original. <laughs> yep. Completely original. And yeah, as you can see here, our, uh, our product, feel free to take a sample. Okay, okay, let me show you how it's made. Maybe uh, so you can see the process so you don't poison yourself, right? Yeah, well, I have some questions about that later. I saw you from a distance. Uh, there, There's going to be some reports of animal cruelty about this place. Hey, you saw nothing. Uh, it's on camera. But it gives 4,096 stress units just off that bad boy alone. Yeah, and it basically powers all of McFold's. Anyways, yeah, so we have the f four main ingredients uh, besides the... Uh, this is all the the vegan by the vegan ingredients here. We have, we have wheat, which gets turned into bread. We have onions, we have tomatoes, and we have cabbage. This is where all the sorting happens. So that portable storage interface here is what collects the items from the farm. And then the main materials, the main ingredients, follow this belt. You can see the flower is on there right now. And this goes along to some shoots, gets sent all the way up here. So now we're at, now we're in the basement of McFold's. <laughs> you can follow me upstairs. And this is the main sorting system. So all the items are buffered in this barrel, and then we have the main sort here. This is the cherry on top. Watch this. Oh, there we go. Come on. It's gone. Yes. <laughs> we're making hamburgers. And look. Oh, it, they, they get, get launched. launched across. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome is that? That is pretty great. And that is the story of McFold's Burgers. Okay, well, first thing first, that was really cool. Second thing second, I hope you guys are not expecting that out of me. Not yet, at least. We gotta start out small. We can't go making our own fast food restaurants right away. In fact, we're gonna start out so small that we're just gonna begin with the basics. And that means depot, and a mechanical press. We're going to want to make some cog wheels, and then immediately turn them into water wheels. I'll set them up over here for now, but honestly, I wish there were a bit more of an alternative to early game create. I'm going to set these up in here for now, but honestly, I wish there were a bit more of an alternative than water wheels. It definitely feels like there's not enough early game sources of stress units, but we make do with what we can. 
In any case, we won't be using them for long, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. We can use a gearbox to get the rotation out from them, bring it up and then around with another gearbox, and then place a big cog, followed by a small one to get some faster rotation going. Now we can put a mechanical press there, and we should hopefully have a decently fast way of making sheets. By combining one of these sheets with string and glass, we get our engineer's goggles, and with a stick and a cogwheel, we get the wrench. The goggles do require us to, unfortunately, take off our cool helmet, but I still like this look, so I'm not complaining. Now we can actually see the numbers that Run create. This press is using 360 stress units, which is actually quite a bit. Thankfully, each water wheel is also generating 320, so we don't have a problem. Also, just a quick note, but these setups will not be permanent at all. They're probably going to be the first thing changed in the next episode. We can take our iron sheets and make a couple propellers, and then in turn use those in encased fans. We can bring our rotational power down, and then use a couple of encased chain drives to turn the fans. Thankfully, they are going the correct direction and blowing away. If I'm remembering correctly, the fans should be able to wash or cook blocks through a trapdoor. And indeed, it works. This doesn't really matter for water, although it is nice that we don't get blown around, but more so for lava, which will absolutely set you on fire. We can now set up another fan with fire in front of it, and one with lava. Now, hypothetically, these should not burn me, which is exactly what we want. I am also going to cover them for my own safety. And now we have actually some very useful contraptions set up. This here, for example, is just a better furnace. This is way faster than a regular furnace, and it costs nothing at all. There's a couple other things for which Create can come in handy, but for now, this is a good start on the materials that we're going to need for the second bridge. Okay, hi. So this segment was about introducing the schematic cannon and why it was so cool, but I've just realized something. You see how this takes a dispenser to craft? And you know how a dispenser uses a bow in the recipe? Cool. Now, I want you to take a look at my inventory and notice that there is a bow here, unenchanted, unused. My power for infinity unbreaking bow is in fact not here. Tell me, what do you think happened to it? <sighs> well, this is the most expensive dispenser I have ever made. I hate this bow. Screw this. Get out of here. Stupid bow. Anyways, by making a schematic cannon and a schematic table, as well as actual empty schematics, which are crazy cheap, what we can do is import schematics from another world. We can then position the schematic somewhere in the world. You can see that this is actually an early test of this building's walls. And then if we were to put the schematic cannon down, we can put the schematic in it and it will be able to place it for us. It does require gunpowder as a fuel, but another fun feature is also that it can give you a book that is a full list of everything that you're going to need. Obviously, I'm not going to be building another one of these, so that was just a test schematic, but that is how we're going to make the second bridge. I also think it will make for even better time lapses, so hopefully it's a win-win. I don't have to play stuff manually, and you guys get a nicer view. Let's test it out. We can now save the correct schematic. You can see that it takes a lot longer. And we can now try and position this in the world. This is a version of the bridge I built in creative mode, just by the way. All of the instructions for how to move this around are fairly self-explanatory, although this is one of those times when you want to make sure that you really position something correctly. Since I'm pretty confident I have, we can switch out and put it into the schematic cannon. I'll have it give me a list of materials I need. This is the old one. And now it's time to gather all of these. Looks like I'll be back in a while.
And there we have it. The second bridge is now complete. I don't know about you guys, but I have been thrilled with how these came out. I really like the style, I really like the gradients I've got going on, it's just overall something I'm really happy with, and I hope that I can keep this style going forward. The idea is for this area out here to be, you know, more of an industrial part, and the area in there to become more of a wealthy residential district, probably with a giant castle at the end there. I've got plans. For now though, I just wanted to say that I'm really happy with this and I hope you guys liked it too. Next episode, it's definitely time to give Create some of the love it deserves. But for now, that's all. Thank you for watching and stay cool.